this is going to turn out to be. Okay, I can't monitors over that way. I'm going to turn that around. I don't know if you can see this very well. It's kind of shiny. I don't know if somebody's came up come up to look at it, but these this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put these bow ties in there to repair cracks in wood because I like to keep all my wood. I don't want to throw it away just because it cracks. Um, I know, but it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, can you see that? Well, it's like totally the opposite of how I need to. Okay, anyway, this is what it is right here. And these cracks, I kept them, I filled them in with some turquoise inlay and all that, so just to kind of highlight it. These almost look like dragonflies. People have been saying it looks like dragonflies. So I think I'll just get to it because I don't have a lot of time. It doesn't take that long, but I don't want to mess it up. Yeah, pass it around. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay, explain to you how I make these bow ties. I make these from scratch. I keep scrap wood like it's a piece of walnut. And you need a router with an inlay kit. I'll show you that. It's a little brass kit that goes into the Porter Cable base. And you get these at Woodcraft, about, uh, they're about 26 bucks. Definitely worth the investment. All you do is you just screw it in. I've got this one on a little Porter Cable handheld router because I can do this kind of thing with it. But to make the uh, bow tie itself, you just take a plunge router and I got one of these at Woodcraft. But you can make your own, and I do make my own. You don't have to have this particular shape. I make turtles, dolphins, fish, whatever you know, whatever you think you want to make. Clamp this to the piece of wood. Take your router with the inlay kit, and you route out the outline of these things. And you're going to get something that looks about like that, with that thing attached in there. So you got to figure out how to get it out. So what you do is take a bandsaw, cut it this way, if you can see that, yeah, and it will release this little bow tie, which is what I have right here. You can see up there that way. Okay, so that's the first part of the project. I usually make a few of these in advance, so I have a, you know, I have a drawer, I have drawers full of them, different wood and all that, so that way I don't have to waste my time trying to make one. I made this thing just prior for you know, for me coming here, so it's pretty easy to make. Once you get used to it, it's not hard to make them. Okay, the secret to this thing is you need some way to clamp this template across this crack. And how you want to position your bow ties is you want to have the smallest part bridging that crack. And that will help secure the wood. It will stabilize it. I mean, you won't be able to turn it at 10,000 RPM, but at least it will hold the bowl together. And it's a nice decorative accent. Generally, I pick one that may be a little different color, really show up, like blood wood would be good on this. I picked walnut, because that's what I happen to have. And so I'm going to wait for this glue gun to heat up. Wish I had already gotten that started. I don't have any jokes or anything to tell you, so Anthony will have to have to regale you with some of his jokes. <laughs> Actually, I think he needs to. For this thing, I probably should have warmed it up a little bit. Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. No, do not pull the crack together. And the reason for that is, I guess I should go uh, start from the beginning. Maybe that would be the best thing. Prep your bowl, rough it out so you have it pretty close to the shape you want. Don't try to pull the crack together, don't glue it or anything like that, but just make sure your bowl is round or close to I just, this is a piece of nasty wood I got from outside there. <laughs> it had cracks all the way through it, so I roughed it and then I turned it, made sure the uh, tenon was true and everything, so at least it's fairly round so you don't have to you want it as close to your final shape as you can 
because if you go too far, you're going to get rid of your bow tie because you don't want your bow tie going all the way through. So I just basically round it out, you know, even can sand it if you want to, but you don't want to have, you want to have it to within probably an eighth of an inch to your final dimension. So take this, this thing is uh, kind of a big one. I've got some small ones, but this will work. Put the glue on it. I put quite a bit on there. There's no other way I know of to clamp this on. I tried every way I could figure out. But put that on there. Might need a little more than that, but that's probably good enough for right now. And just hold that there until it's, because it takes a little while for it to set up. But you want to make sure that is really secure. Well, they, uh, in the old, well, yeah, they, this is the method they're using now in their wood turning, but the, you know, the original ones, when they did repairs on their bowls, they chiseled them out with a chisel and a mallet. And I don't think you have enough, I uh, don't have enough time really to do that tonight. Well, you could, but the problem is, you know, you're working on a three-dimensional surface. And you're going to have to have, you know, I don't know how thick you want your bowl. This bowl is going to probably end up being mm, at least a quarter of an inch because it's pretty soft wood. It's pretty dangerous. You're going to have to have a really thick bow tie. And you're restricted to the length of your router bit to use to cut that bow tie out. And those router bits, I think, maximum is a half an inch. And the problem is, this is a quarter of an inch. You may have a half an inch, depending on the size of your bow tie. There's, I, it's hard for me to explain the geometry of this, but uh, basically it's a lot of trial and error. But this seems to be pretty solid. It's still kind of wobbly. Anyway, I use a small router like this, the 310, because it's light. And that way you're not pushing down too hard on your template. You just have to be very careful. And this is the critical thing here. you got to have your adjust your bit height. Uh, probably about a quarter of an inch reveal through your template. And then you need to hollow out your recess. Hopefully, this may not be perfect. It's pretty solid, but it may not be perfect. Make sure everything's secure. And I guess just in the interest of Norm Abrams, I guess I better wear some safety glasses. Dorky ones, but that's okay. All right, when you plunge this in, you want to go towards the center because you don't want to chew up your template. If you chew up your template, it's worthless. Of course, these things are easy to make, too, so it's no big deal. going to have to get a little more. It has to be perfectly cleaned out, otherwise it's going to be a problem.
Now you don't. You want to make sure this is uh, pretty much done before you take the template off, because if you take the template off, there is no repositioning it. You can't do it over. You could probably make a bigger one, but uh, it's kind of a hassle to do that. Now, can you see the uh, the recess for this? It's pretty well cleaned out. Not too many chips. Nothing left in the middle of it or anything. Now you notice it has rounded edges on it. You can see that. You also notice that this bow tie has squared off edges, really sharp edges. Now you have a couple of choices. You can either round the edges on your bow tie, or if you want it to really look nice, chisel out all these little corners to make it match. Now that's what I did on that bowl. I chiseled them all out. On this one, looks like it's going to be good. I'm going to round it off because I'm going to cheat. Now this looks good enough here, so I'm just going to twist that off. That's all, that, that's all you have to do. Pick the glue off if you want. And all I'm going to do is just round these off a little bit. Doesn't take much. Now, what you can do is, this thing fits really nice right now. I mean, it's just as exact as you can get it. Um, some people say use uh, CA glue, but CA glue is not good for structural. And this is a structural repair. I use Tight Bond 2 or Tight Bond 3. Coat it real well. And then you pound that in. my persuader here. Okay, you're going to have some left sitting up like that. Let the glue dry and then just turn it as usual and uh, it's very easy to level out. A couple of things though. Different types of grain on end grain. End grain is not as structurally sound as the side grain here. Yeah, how you get this part here, if there's a crack along here, those things are excellent to repair. They are very solid. This will work. You can also adjust the size of your bow ties. This will require a smaller one, whereas this one will require a larger one. And uh, you can do them across the top, the top edge, if you have a crack along the top. You can bridge a hole, or you can um, make different shapes, just have do inlay. I brought a bowl with a turtle in the bottom of it. That's how I did the little turtle on the bottom of that. You have to make sure that your, if you do it in the bottom, you got to make sure your plate fits in there. You also have to make sure that your router has enough room to move around and not hit the side of the bowl. So you got to make sure you have, it takes a lot of planning. But this is, this is actually pretty, this is the easiest way to do it. And you can use whatever wood you want. You can make whatever shape you want. If you do make your own template, there is an orientation to your template. You have to make sure that when you're working down from the, as you cut one out of your template, the bow tie has to go that way into your bowl because your template's not going to be perfectly symmetrical. When you turn it upside down, you could pound that thing in and bust up your bowl. But this is the, it's a good way. It's a, you know, you're done. You could fill in your crack with epoxy or, you know, whatever inlay whatever stuff you have of your choice. But I've saved a lot of bowls this way. Sold a lot of bowls with these. They, uh, they like these things. They never know how you do it. But I don't tell them how I do it either. <laughs> so this is, a, this is the first time I ever told anybody how I do it. And I've, you know, I've never seen these done around here. And this is, you know, I think I'm the only one now. I won't be the only one, but <laughs> yep, that's it. My secret's out. But uh, they're not that hard to do. And uh, if you have a bowl with a crack in it like that, you can save it. And these things hold up real well. I mean, just be sure that you let the glue dry at least 24 hours. Now, are there any questions? Because that, that went by pretty fast, even for me. Uh, 
Uh, the thickness thickness of the bowl is determined is determined by the length of this bow tie. You got to have it set in there at least some distance. If you have one really long like this, you're going to have to have that set at least have the ends because you're going to be going through this. It's a flat bow tie going on a round surface. So you got to make sure all parts of it are in deep enough because otherwise you go to sanding on that and part of your bow tie disappears, you ruin the effect. So it just it's a learning curve. You try smaller ones at first and you go bigger ones. You can do inlay on the inlay if you want, have double bow ties in it. You can have them crisscrossed, however you want to do it. But I recommend, I don't really like the rounded corners. I just did it because it's quicker and I didn't think anybody would want to see me chiseling all night. But it really looks a lot nicer when you chisel out the corners. It's, it's, a, it's well worth it to do that. Yes? Um, yeah, because you have more wood surface. See like this end grain here? The end grain is pretty weak. It wants to pull apart. That's what this one did too. This wood here was apparently it was from a tree that died and half of it was wet and half was dry. So it didn't like the uh, drying process. Yes. Okay, yeah, the tools you'll need, you'll need a plunge router, and you'll need a router like that. You can use a plunge router on this, but you have a giant router on that template, you're putting a lot of pressure on your glue. So you want to have as small a router as you can. What kind of value? Mm, that router cost me 125 because I bought it in a kit with a bunch of other accessories. Uh, plunge router, mm, 180 bucks for a good one. I've got 14 routers, so I've got my choice of routers. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing... I, I don't use a lathe very often. <laughs> um, I can't remember what I was going to say now. I do this on uh, flat work too. That I bought that from Woodcraft. Yeah, it was already made. This thing here. In fact, I keep thinking I'm going to cut parts of it off because it's it's so big. It's you know sometimes you're down here and you have nowhere to put your like if you're going to do a cr uh, fix a crack right here, you're going to have to position this like this. Or like that. There's a lot of different ways you got to think about positioning it. This thing's kind of big, but I use it on big bowls. I have some big bowls, so I got a lot of room to work with it. I do have some smaller templates that are probably about the size of this. And you can position those on the inside of the bowl, too, if you want. I bought some of them, and I, I make a lot of my own. I, you know, if I want like a leaf shape, I'll make my own leaf shape. Cut it out with a saw, a skull saw or something. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, let me take this out and show you what it is. Okay, to cut your, this is what it is. It's a little inlay kit. has a little ring that holds it on. The secret to this thing is it has a little bushing that clips on here. Like this. You can see it like that. And then there's this part here. This is the part you use to cut your bow tie with. Clap this on like that. And that's the part you use to cut the socket with. No thinking needed. It's very, very easy to use. Uh, I got this at Woodcraft. It's kind of pretty well beat up by now. I might need to get another one. But they have great instructions. It comes with a centering bit, which I don't really need. also comes with the uh, carbide 1 8 inch cutter bit. I think it's about 26 bucks. It's a white side product. 
and uh, all you just need to remember which you cut your cut your bow tie with a small one, you cut your slot with the big one. And it fits in the Porter Cable sub bases. If you have a different kind of router, like maybe a Sears or something like that, it may not fit in that. So use a Porter Cable. Not that I'm trying to sell them, but I try to stick with one sub base. That way all my attachments fit. Any other questions? Oh, wait. I didn't even see you back there. I was like... No, the cracks are already there. If a crack does, if a crack does appear, that's fine too. You fix it right then, right on the spot. If this wood was already cracked, it cracked while I was drying it. And I was like, "Well, that's no problem. I, I'm not going to throw it." What's that? I'd rather I wait till the wood is dry. I dry my wood at least a year, an inch or a year and a half or per inch because I don't want somebody buys my bowl and they put it in their house and the thing cracks. Well, they're not going to be very happy. <laughs> so I want to make sure it's good and dry. And the cracks will show up. And I'd rather them show up in my house than somebody else's house. Yes. You can leave the crack there. Um, what I would do, I would have a, probably two bow ties in this, one here and one down here. And, uh, of course, you got the idea, you know, you have to plan where your center lines are because you don't want to have, you want to bridge the crack. You don't want to have one way over, it just wouldn't look right. I mean, it's, it becomes obvious when you do a few of them. But um, really, it just takes, uh, it takes practice. It took me about three months to get it right. Yes. No, you're not going to draw it together with it. You're just going to stabilize it. That way, it won't. As you're turning, that way, it won't. The wood won't fly apart or break off. You can also use this to bridge knots. If you know you think your knot's going to come out, you can have one long enough. You could bridge the knot with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can if you want. I like to have the crack. If I'm going to go to the trouble of the putting this bow tie in there, I want somebody to know there was a crack there and that I took the time to repair it. If you're going to hide the crack, you know, I glue it together with sawdust. What's that? Right. So sometimes I just leave the crack open. Mm-hmm. A feature. That means it's art, you know, because it doesn't hold any soup. <laughs> you can if you fill the crack in. And you can fill the crack in with epoxy. That way, you, you know, clear epoxy or a black epoxy. And that way, the crack is still there. You got the bow tie there, too. But your bowl is usable. And I've done that, too. I filled in a bowl, made a salad bowl, and used epoxy and walnut. It's gone now. I sold it, though. <laughs> yes. What's that? Um, yeah, pretty much. You really need to keep it perpendicular to the crack. I mean, you're, there is a little leeway this way or the other, but the whole idea for this is to make sure that the, the wood is stabilized. Uh, you don't buy black epoxy. You get a black dye and mix it with the epoxy. Can you? Really? I'd rather just get the clear and then I can dye it whatever color I want. But black epoxy? Uh, I just have a little jar of dye and it's, I don't know, I think I got that at Woodcraft. It's kind of a paste almost. And you just mix it in with it. just takes a very little bit. And one little jar like that can do a gallon of epoxy. And uh, it's, it's messy though. You don't want to... <laughs> I got that all the Debbie can see I got that all over me one time. I was like, ah, I hated it. Any other questions? No. 
You're welcome.